Well, to start out, obviously, you know, you're involved with the Mel Brooks project and he's had such a massive influence on film and television basically since the start of the medium with Sid Caesar. So I was curious for each of you, what was your introduction to Mel Brooks, like a film or a television show? Mine was Spaceballs. Uh, that was the first movie that I remember seeing uh, in the theater. Uh, that was Mel Brooks film. Uh, and it just, it was as astonishing to me as Star Wars was. Like I just, I, I, I totally, I was young, but I totally understood all of the gags. I laughed in all the right places. And then I went down a deep dive and I probably watched history of the world, blazing saddles and young Frankenstein, like 60 times each. We just had the VHS tapes and it would go nuts. For me, it was blazing saddles. I think I saw it for the first time when I was like 11 or 12. And um, I remember just kind of, yeah, I was at a friend's house and I, and her dad just threw it on and I, I, I could, didn't really expect anything at all and was kind of like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it kind of just like, I was like, what? <laughs> um, and I, you know, also, um, yeah, I remember just being quite uh, enchanted by that film <laughs> at that age. <laughs> Mine is, I'm going to copy on uh, with Zaz. Mine was uh, Blazing Saddles as well. My dad had the cassette. I lived, I, I traveled around, my dad was in the Air Force, so we traveled around a lot. And like his cassettes were his life, or his VHS, excuse me, were like his life. Like that was his like, his childhood was in there. His like high school years were in there. My parents had me really, really young. So like that was something that like he would sit around and watch all the time. And I remember like, Similar to Zazie, I was just like, what in the hell is happening? <laughs> Why is my father laughing so hard at all of these like very questionable things? And why am I also leaning in so much? And like, I just want, I I love, I just want to do this. And like, I love this. And so, uh, Fades and Saddles for me, for sure. So how did you guys get involved with this? Was this, were you contacted? Was this something that you expressed interest in because of sort of Mel Brooks's influence on your work or was it something different? I was contacted. Um, I, yeah, I remember, I don't actually remember. I was just, I was contacted and um, was so excited. I mean, I, I had met Nick once before and like profusely, uh, word vomited my adoration for Big Mouth. And I think I met him a couple of times and did that every time. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I I, I want to think that uh, he liked that and then gave me a call. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was um, a happy sort of, yeah, reach out from, from Nick and Ike and I got a very frantic call from Ike Baron Holtz telling me, not asking me if I wanted to do it, but telling me that I needed to do it because <laughs> apparently Mel Brooks uh, asked for me, which I'm sure was said to everybody else in, oh, the, yeah. in the project. Yeah. So it was like a great way of gaslighting every one of us into like doing it because we're all uh, apparently Mel Brooks is really up with every movie that comes out right now. <laughs> That's all of us, intimately. Um, but it was, I'm sure like these guys, a no brainer. The, the fact that we get, that we're blessed enough to do a Mel Brooks project in 2023 with a 96 year old living legend who is as important to film as Spielberg, but in the comedy space like that to me is, it was just a, a dream come true. Yeah. I remember getting the call, Nick called and, uh, and uh, I remember he just said, Hey, so we're doing history of the world. And I was like, yep. What do you need? Like, it wasn't even like, he didn't even need to finish what it was. And I was already in there, like similar to, to what Josh said, like, it's, it's, this, it's crazy that we get to uh, have the opportunity to work with this living legend who asked for all of us by name and even referenced uh, all the characters of ours that he loved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, they, they definitely sell you. Nick and Ike sell you. Um, uh, Wanda's Absolutely. just like, are you doing it or are you not doing it? Like, are you yeah. talking about Wanda? Like, I don't, I don't have time for your bullshit. Uh, but no, we, it was, you know, this was a no-brainer for sure. And I know Jay and, and Zazie, you two both got to work quite closely with Nick because you got to play Mary Magdalene and Jesus. And you're in one of the few sketches that sort of stretches over a handful of episodes you get to do that wonderful Beatles parody so in terms of that those characters was there sort of any room for improv because you had a longer sort of screen time or was it all sort of on the page really I mean what's not improvised (laughs) um it was actually really nice because I don't actually I don't think of myself as a comedian at all I get very nervous but I felt like I was like this is the environment where I can just go for the lowest common denominator joke and it will be accepted (laughs) and so it was so fun to just sort of I mean yeah we were improvising a lot and it was very encouraged um which and a very uh welcoming audience I think Ike kept breaking laughing all the time which made me feel really good about myself um so um yes I would say that tons of improv I think one of my favorite things was like not knowing what Zazie was gonna do for Yoko there's this there was just this in the script where it was like Yoko shrieks or something like that and yeah. not knowing what sound was going to come out of her mouth and I'll never forget all of us we couldn't use the take there's no way that we could have used that take because every <laughs> single person broke when she made this like she grabbed the mic and is like just swaying back and forth and does this guttural like Ooh. it was <laughs> absolutely (laughs) amazing but they just encouraged us to like just have fun with these characters and you know i think because that particular skit is based obviously off of off of the beatles doc like it was this thing of like how far can you push playing with you know jesus as Lennon and mary as yoko like how far (laughs) can you push those things and play with that and so uh there, I don't know that a scripted word made it in the, end. <laughs> in the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was one, definitely one of my favorite bits, and sort of connected to that. This might involve you three kind of duking it out, but you do all three do British accents at some point. So, who do you think sort of does the best out of the three of you? Josh Gad. Wow, I I, I was also going to say Josh Gad. I, I'm <laughs> so happy you guys beat me to. No, I, the truth is, is I'm terrible. At British, I, 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 it was so funny because I was like, "Do you guys re- like? Do you want me to do this for comedic effect, or do you want the audience to laugh at how bad I sound doing it?" And they insisted that I did it, and I'm still not sure if the if they're going to laugh with me or at me. So either way, <laughs> I guess it's to win for the sketch. Well, one last question for you guys, and it's a little bit out there, it's a little bit silly, but if you could go to any historical time period, history of the world leaning or not, which one would you pick? I'm obsessed with the Victorian and Ed- Edwardian period. I just, I just um, moved into this place that has all these very Victorian feelings, and it's like so the energy I'm into. So I would aesthetically, aesthetically, I would do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a lot of places we can really go, but um, yeah. <laughs> I, I would. <laughs> You know, but you know, history is is history. Um, I would, I'd probably go to Rome. I'd probably uh, see what it was like to be a Caesar. Go to the Colosseum, hang out. You know, watch a watch a battle happen. I don't know. Nice. Walk around, in ro- walk around in a robe and just stinky all the time. You know, all of these sound theoretically fun for about five minutes. Five minutes, and then they just sound really complicated and dangerous. I guess I would. Uh, uh, the 90s. I, I would probably safely go to, to 1996 uh, and just, <laughs> yeah, just, I, w- I think I would feel confident, most confident and comfortable, <laughs> maybe as far back as the 80s um, and just sort of relive that again. Uh, otherwise, the Italian Renaissance to me would be a, a cool place to to, to be just kind of checking in on what good old Michelangelo and and uh, his his Ninja Turtle pals are up to. <laughs> That would be mine. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. It was lovely to meet you. Thank you. Thanks. You too.